Well, good morning again. <laughs> All right. So as I was praying, you know, what God wanted uh, to share with you guys, um, I, I kind of, well, I kind of argued. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you how that turned out here in a minute. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I was like, God, we know this. But but ever, but as I kept praying and seeking and praying, he just kept bringing me back to this. So how many of you know that if God said do it, we need to do it, so I'm doing it. And so it might be something you've heard before, but that's okay because we all need to review, right? Right? You know, in school... Uh, they, uh, kids, like my daughter just, just took finals here uh, a few months ago, and, and, you know, they learn for a whole semester. They learn all this stuff, and then they have a final. So, and then before they take the final test, then they review, right? So that's what we're doing. We're reviewing. It's okay. It's good. And, you know, and, and like Pastor Tammy said, have a teachable spirit, and I'm just obeying the Lord and just just doing what he asked me to do. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, I did not write down my title. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, my title is God Sees and God Also Provides. Okay? So we are going to start out in Genesis chapter 22. And it's a very familiar story to every single one of us. We've all heard this story before. And, um, and I'm going to, as we go through this, I'm going to share some things that God kind of opened up to me in my, my individual study time. So we're going to talk about when um, Abraham, uh, when God told Abraham to take Isaac, his, his promised son, his gift from God, um, and, and a son that he loved very, very much. How many of you love your children? Very, very much. And they try to sometimes, but you love them. <laughs> But, but uh, God told him to take him up and, and to sacrifice him. Now, which meant he was going to have to put him to death. And how many of you, as parents, you know, if God would have told you that, would be like, you, know, you sure about that, God? So we're going to start there. So let's start in Genesis, Genesis chapter 22, and we're going to start in verse 1. So Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. Genesis chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things that God tempted Abraham. And he said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee. So he told him, you know, get Isaac, you're going to go to Mount Moriah, and I'll tell you where to go on there, and you're going to sacrifice him. Now, like I just talked about a little bit earlier, Isaac was, was uh, the promised son to Abraham. Now, going back a little bit, um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but in, in, uh, in Genesis chapter 17, God told Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations, and he told him that that you're, you're going to have a son. He told Sarah, you're going to have a son. Now, these weren't, you know, normal childbearing age people. These were people that were, they were very, very old in age. And, and God promised them that, you know, that through, through your son that I'm going to give you, all this is going to come about. And he told them, you know, he's going to give them land flowing with milk and honey. And, and his descendants would be, more than the stars that he could count. But now, God's telling me, take your son that I gave you, that I told you all this is going to happen through, and go up and sacrifice him. So, keep that in mind. Um, let's go into verse 3. Uh, it says, And Abraham rose early in the morning, and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood, and burnt offering, and rose up, and went in went unto the place of which God had told him. In verse 4, Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Now these are the men that, that helped them, you know, he, him and Isaac went up, and they had, you know, they took the burnt wood, and they had supplies and stuff, and so all he, these men went with them. So here's what he tells these men. 
in, uh, it says, Abide here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go up yonder and worship and come again to you. Now, Abraham had no, I mean, he's, he's obeying God, right? He's, he's going up there, he's doing what God told him to do. And as far as he knew, he was sacrificing his son. But he said, I and the lad will go worship and then we'll come back to you. So remember that, okay? And so um, in verse 6, it says, And then Abraham took the wood, the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood uh, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Now, I kind of wonder how this really went down. <laughs> you know? I mean, Isaac's starting to put two and two together here. He's like, there's there's the wood. There, you know, I don't see the offering. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And so they both went, and so they both of them went together. Now, <clears throat> The scripture doesn't say whether or not Abraham knew for sure that he wasn't going to have to go through with it. I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure he knew that God said, do it. I'm going to go do it. And whatever will be, will, you know, God will provide no matter what happens. Even if I sacrifice my son like God commanded him to do and he obeyed the Lord, God was going to provide later on. So Abraham knew no matter what happened, God was going to provide. God was going to see him through. Everybody catching that? Everybody's looking at me like, <laughs> okay. In verse 9, and they came to the place where God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. So Isaac's on the altar. He's bound up again. Kind of would like to be here, there to see how that went. And but he's on the altar, and Abraham's ready. I mean, he's ready to go, and he's not looking at God, going, "Okay, God, I'm getting ready. You know, I, we're going." You know, he was ready to go, and and he was going to do what what God had commanded him to do. But then again, he also knew God was going to provide, no matter what. You know, no matter what happened. And um, let's see, where did I leave off? Um, in verse 11, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And in verse 12, he said, Lay not thine hand upon thy lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that you fearest God. Seeking thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham filled up his eyes, or lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up to as offered him up for a burnt offering, and he instead of his son, instead of his son, sorry. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. And it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Oops, excuse me, sorry. Now, if if you if you have any sort of, of, of biblical background, we all know what Jehovah Jireh means. What does Jehovah Jireh mean? My God, my provider. Exactly. And so, you know, like I said, going up there, God knew. God knew God was going to provide no matter what happened. No matter, you know, even before he knew, he saw the ram caught in the thickets, he knew God was going to provide. And there's a lot to be learned from this. There's, you know, obedience and all those things, but for right now, we're going to focus on God, our provider. And if you go, if you look up Jehovah Jireh, and if you look it up in the Hebrew, it comes out, and I'm going to, Bonnie's going to have to correct me here, it comes out to Yahweh Yira, thank you. And um, and if you go even more into the Hebrew, Yira means to provide or to see. Okay, everybody with me here? Now, we're going to kind of, we're going to focus on both of those, but that is what Yira means. It means 
to provide or to see. And when we are in need of anything, no matter what it is, now I'm not, I'm not talking just about um, tangible things, you know, I'm not talking about money. I mean, I am, but I'm, I'm not focusing just on that. No matter what it is, God sees. He sees the need, no matter what it is. And he provides for that need, no matter what it is. And, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. And, you know, and, and we all know that. We all know God provides. But, but sometimes when, you know, when the rubber meets the road and you're in the thicket of it, you know, you, you, you kind of forget that. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can be the best, the, you know, the most righteous, faithful, holy person ever. But sometimes, you know, we're human and our flesh rises up. And sometimes we, we tend to, to forget that. You know, I mean, we know it, but we we forget it, if that makes sense. And so um, we're going to go to Psalms chapter 34. And we're going to, um, remember I told you last week we were going to visit Psalms 34 again? Uh, we're going to look at verse 15. Psalms 34, verse 15. And it says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. So right there, the word's telling us that, that God, excuse me, God's eyes are upon us. No matter what we're going through, he hears it. He hears our cries. He hears our pleads. He, he sees what is going on. So when those troubles come in, those things that catch you by surprise, you know, the, whatever it may be, that, you know, um, I'm just trying to think of... Um, you know, maybe you lost your job or, you know, I mean, it didn't, you know, and you're in a state of panic because you're like, oh no, what am I going to do? God's already seen that. Nothing catches God by surprise. Yeah, right. Nothing. And, you know, and he's already 15 steps ahead of you, <laughs> you know, because he sees it. He hears your cry, you know, and he, he will provide no matter what the turnout is, no matter what, um, no matter what the circumstances are, if you you plant your feet and you stand and you you say, God, your word says this, and you're going to provide, you're going to work it out for my good, he will do it. Amen. And, and, you know, going, um, and I know I keep talking about this, but it's very important, you know, during the time of prayer and fasting, God talked about to stand and believe. He also talked about how we need to seek after him and get less of us and more of him, in, you know, in us. And, and I know I keep talking about it, but that's what he gave us for this year. So that is valuable things that we need to know as we go into this year. And, and I really feel like, I mean, God's telling us, I will provide no matter what happens, no matter what the situation is. I will provide. Hallelujah. And so going down to, to Psalm 7, we're going to go down to verse 17. It says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and he delivered them out of all their troubles. Now, see where I'm going here? I'm not talking about just money, but just, you know, whether it be family troubles, whether it be job troubles, whether it be you need healing, whatever. God delivers us out of that as long as we stand firm in his word and we trust him and we have faith and we just keep going and we stand and believe God will deliver. Amen. And so um, let's go, uh, we're going to go back uh, a chapter in Psalms and we're going to go to chapter 33 and we're going to start in verse 18. And we're going to read verses 18 through 22. Psalms 33, 18 through 22. And it's uh, starting in 18. It says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, and he is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name, let thy cry mercy, O Lord, and be upon us according as we hope in thee. Now, how many of you know what it is to fear the Lord? You know, and we talked about that last week in my offering teaching. Fearing the Lord is not sitting under a rock, you know, like, 
that's that's not what fearing the Lord means, and we all know that. But fearing the Lord is is um, is fear of of well. Let me let me go. Let me. Fear is a deep and complete reverence of Him. That's you know, it's just it's just a complete awe of Him. And how many of you you know you you stand in awe of the Lord? We stand in awe during praise and worship, and we stand in awe as we we you know we listen to His reign of word, and we stand in awe as as He does things in our lives and and moves and just does crazy miraculous things. We stand in awe of Him, and. Um, you know, and, and also fear of the Lord is, you know, fear of losing that into intimacy with him. And now if, if for some, you know, if that happens, it's not that God went anywhere. God doesn't go anywhere. It's us that, that causes the loss of that. You know, so that's what fear of the Lord means. And it means, you know, you, you also have that fear of just, of just not having a life with him, not having a world with him. And again, that's not because he's went anywhere. It's because we've done something to separate separate us from him. I want that. I want everybody to be very clear of that. <laughs> he does not go anywhere. We are the ones that that cause, for whatever reason, you know. But but the good news is, what's the good news? As quick as it took us to get out of that intimacy, we can get right back in. And so that's the good news. So don't don't get all hung up on that. But. But uh, so the fear of the Lord is 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 just awe of His goodness and His holiness and His His and a reverence for Him. And I believe Abraham had that. Abraham had that that fear of the Lord, which you know when God asked him to do something in our human minds was so way over here. He did it because he had the reverence for him and he trusted God and he knew that he was going to provide. He knew that he was going to come through. And um, let's go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26. And it says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. And in the Good News translation, that that uh, that last part of it means security for a man and his family. So fear of the Lord gives you that confidence in the Lord. It gives you that confidence to know that that God is who He says He is. God will do what He says He'll do, and God will provide. God will come through. And and. So the second part of that verse says it gives you security. How, how many of you like security? <laughs> Especially during this day and age, there's no security whatsoever, none. But God will give you that security for you and your family. And, um, you know, and no matter what it is, you know, Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And like Pastor Brian likes to, to add, and, and it's a good thing to remember, all those things that line up with the word of God. You know, so, you know, you may want, I don't know, um, Pastor Brian always talks about New Harley or whatever, you know, you may want those things, but, but you know, and, and the Bible does says God knows the desires of our heart and, and things like that, but but as we get closer to him, those desires become what he wants, not what we want. And but it, but it says he shall supply all of our needs. And in Matthew chapter six, uh, verses twenty six through thirty three, it talks about how God provides for the birds and he provides for the 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 bees and and just all the the animals that 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 roam the earth. He provides for them and. And he says that he will do that for us. He says, don't worry. Don't, don't have anxiety because I've, I've already provided those things for you. And so, um, and let's go to um, Matthew, let's go to Matthew chapter 6 real quick. I don't have this one right now, so i got to look it up. In Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to go... In verse 33. So 
You know what? Let's just read. Let's go back up to 26. We're going to read all of that. In verse 26, Matthew 6, verse 26, it says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap. Hold on. Let me, let me get the King James. I'm sorry. Um, in verse 26, it says, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet their heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic, cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. In verse 30 it says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So right there he's telling you, right there, don't worry about it. Don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about your food. Don't worry about all that. He's... he's that's already provided. Okay, everybody can catch that? He's, he's telling you, don't even worry about that. And in verse uh, 31, it says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So he already knows that. Well, he knows everything. But he's saying, you know, I know these are things you need to survive. It says, but, but here's where I'm getting at. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added for you, unto you. So as you seek the kingdom of God, it says all these things shall be added unto you, and then some. You know, no matter, no matter what you are in need of, no matter what it is, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then these things will be added unto you. And, you know, and just to review, you know, back in Psalms, it says God sees. He sees. Jehovah Jireh provides and he sees. He knows what's going, what, what you are in need of. All you got to do is reach out and grab it. And then as you grab it, you need to stand. And you need to stand in faith. Sometimes it comes immediately. Sometimes it comes over a progression. And then sometimes... You know, healing especially, sometimes it comes in heaven. Does that make God, his scriptures, a liar? Absolutely not. Because is this our tent, or is this our home? Do we stay here? Is this where we are bound to stay? No, no, we're passing through. <laughs> you know, so, so you know, it's First Peter 2, 24 says, By your stripes you are healed. And whether here or heaven, you are healed. So, so I just want to, to really, really encourage you. And um, no matter what it is, God will see you through. And our, our last scripture, let's go to um, 2 Timothy. And we're going to go to chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're going to start in verse 10. Now, this is Paul talking. And, and in, in this, this scripture right here, he's talking about severe persecution. And, and he's talking about the things that, that he, has, he has went through. And, and how many of you know Paul did suffer severe persecution? And, and he, that's what he's talking about here. But, but starting in verse 10, it says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Persecutions, afflictions, which came upon me in Antioch, in Iconium, in Lystra, and what persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. How cool is that? Out of all of that, all them persecutions, all them things, the Lord delivered him. Now, the Bible says God's not a respecter of persons. So if he delivered Paul, out of all those persecutions, what won't he deliver you out of? Okay. If he delivered David out of, the, not David, I'm sorry, Daniel out of the lion's den, out of the mouths of the lions, what won't he deliver you out of? What won't he provide for you? Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, he was with them. 
It said they saw four people in the fire, not three. They threw three in, but they saw four. And he delivered them out, and their clothes didn't smell. They're, they didn't even smell of ash. They weren't burnt. If he delivered them, them out of that, what will he deliver you out of? What will he provide for you that you need? You know, David and Goliath. David was, um, I don't know, I'm not sure. I, I'd say probably my height, not very tall. But the Bible, or if you Google how big Goliath was, this is Goliath was over nine feet tall. And God just, and he delivered the Israelites out of that battle. And he killed Goliath with just a little stone. If he delivered them out of that, what won't he deliver you out of? I mean, there's just many, many, many more examples. And so I just want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through, I don't care what it is. And I'm not making light of it, not light of anything. I just want to put that reminder in you, God sees, and he will provide. He will see you through it as long as we seek him and we chase after him and we stand in his word. And, um, and so I just want to, to just really encourage you with that. There, um, and this came, many of you know there's things as a church that we're praying for. And during this time, you know, I was praying with Pastor Brian and Pastor Tammy, and we were really seeking after things. And, and I was praying, and that's when I came across this verse that God sees, and he will deliver. And, and that just really encouraged me, you know, and, and just all we got to do is stand on it. You know, it, if it's finances, Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 11, we talked, we just talked about that. If it's healing, 1 Peter 2, 24, God, your word says this, I'm standing on it. If it's grief or a broken heart, Matthew 5, 6 says, blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted. Psalms 126, verse 5 says, those that sow in tears shall reap in, in uh, reap in, I quote that all the time, my goodness, reap, shouts of joy, that's what it was, sorry, <laughs> I quote that one all the time. Because I've lived through that. I, I've lived through it. You know, the, the tears that you cry, God will turn those tears into joy. He sees that broken heart. And he will get you through that. I'm a full walking, living testimony of that. And no matter what. And, you know, let's just, let's just back it up here for just a second. I, for those of you that don't know my testimony. Well, I have many, but... <laughs> But one, one thing where I'm going with this, seven years ago, my husband uh, just uh, tragically passed away. No rhyme, no reason. We don't know. They never found out what was wrong with him other than it was his time. And you know, I mean, you know, that's kind of a hard pill to swallow. I was left with two very small children, and I did not know how I was going to go through and how I was going to persevere on <laughs> and and I you know and I remember and Heather and I through many years before that we had lost many people in our family and it was just one right after the other and it was like you'd no sooner get a break from one another one would go <laughs> you know no sooner get a break from that one and another one would go and and I remember looking at Pastor Brian and I said I can't do this I cannot do this one I'm done I, I, that's it I'm done and and I'll never forget that conversation because he looked at me and he goes, no, no, you can't. You cannot do it. And he goes, but through Jesus, you can. And that has been true. That has been true. And, you know, and I got many different um, prophetic words through that. And I am here to tell you, God is faithful. He sees the hurting hearts and he will turn those tears into joy. And it's no different from a hurting heart to sickness, to, to needs, to Addiction, it doesn't matter. He sees it. He will get you through it if you let him. Amen. That's Amen. the key there, too, if you let him. Once you give it to him, you've got to leave it. You can't, you can't tell him, well, God, this is how I think it should work out. Because, you know, how I many you know, uh, uh, I think it's Isaiah, God says that our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our plans are not his plans. So, so that's the key. You have to let him do what he's going to do. I'm sure Isaiah had a huge different plan. Not, yeah, Abraham. Sorry, my goodness. Abraham had a had a had a 
I'm sure he had a, a different way of saying, God, we can do this. <laughs> we don't have to do, you know, take Isaac up there. We can do this. But God had a plan. And through all of that, how I do mean, you know, I'm sure Abraham's faith just went. <laughs> I mean, it was already like, you know, up there anyway. But, you know, I mean, and, and we're still, how many years ago is that? We're still talking about that. We're still learning from that. And so, um, you know, again, no matter what it is that you need, if you need wisdom, James 1, 5 says, those that lack wisdom, let them come to the Father without his faith wavering, and it will be granted. Amen. If you need restoration, um, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. If you need freedom, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says you are a new creation in Christ. The old man has passed away, and the new man has begun. If you need freedom from addiction, John 8, 36 says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Stand on that and believe what he says he sees and he will deliver. So um, anyway, so that's, that's what I have for you today. And I hope that encouraged you. But, you know, it, it just... It just doesn't matter what it is, you know. And like I said, we all know God provides. We all know that, but you know, it's just it's just a gentle or a, just a gentle reminder that He also sees. He also sees what's going on, and and He wants you to cry out. He wants you to say, "God, here's where I'm at. You know what's going on. You see. This is what Your Word says. So I'm going to stand right here, and I'm going to stand on it, and I'm going to believe it." until something happens. Amen. And so I just want to, to just encourage you with that today. So anyway, so thank you so much for coming. Um, it was blessed to see all the new faces and the new friends. It was just, it was nice to have you all here. Please come back. If you didn't like this or you didn't like me, Pastor Brian will be back, I promise. <laughs> I promise he'll be back. Uh, keep praying for him. They're, they're um, um, great things is happening in his foot. Healing is coming. We're standing and we're believing. God's moving and he will be back. But where I was going with this, is no service is the same. If you didn't like this one, the next one will be different. That's kind of where I was going with that. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so thank you for coming. Have a wonderful day. And I hope to see each and every one of you guys again soon. Be blessed.